Hi, hello everyone. Um, thanks for joining us today. My name is uh, Beatrice Rodriguez and uh, I'm uh, one of the um, Global HR Directors uh, as part of the General Electric Company and um, I actually lead one of the divisions in the oil and gas business, um, especially focused on the subsea exploration and production of the subsea. So um, what, I was, what I'm going to talk to you today actually it is about a little bit of change management um, how do we do certain uh, things uh, in GE when we talk about transformation, when we talk about um, simplification? And I actually would like us, all of us to kind of get accomplished in this session, get out with three, three things for you to think differently as you, as you leave the room. One, it is about um, a different approach on performance development that we are trying to drive in the company. I hope that that prompts as well some, some thoughts for you um, when you're back at your, at your normal day. I'm also going to talk to you about uh, Fastworks, which is kind of a way that we've got within GE to basically um, try to experiment a little bit more on a creative ways of, of doing things. Um, and then also the third one, it is about the beliefs and uh, the growth values and, and the beliefs, which is a cultural mindset change that we are also going through in GE. Um, and kind of what are the things that we are changing from uh, how do we used to see the growth values versus how to see today with everything going on, uh, the beliefs and the cultural, cultural change of our employees. So I wanted to start with this because as I said in the, in the panel, um, if it doesn't come from the top, very, very difficult that is going to happen at the bottom. So this is our CEO, Jeff Fimmel, and he basically spends a third of his time uh, going into, into some of those leadership courses and basically telling leaders and managers, look, you know what, we can change everything in GE, but you need to help us lead in this change. So it is the only thing that actually, and if you have followed a little bit GE story, one of the constant that we can say is that there's always change. Every year there is a new acquisition, every year there is a new process. So at some point we had to stop and said, how do we really manage this? So, so this is something that we are going to say to, to see to us as well. So um, this, is, this is the world out there is not only changing GE, but the world out there is also changing like every, every minute. So we can put in place different processes. We can put in place different um, programs. But guess what? It's the mindset that we need to change. It's the culture that we need to change. It's not just the process. And all you are in the wave and you go through the process, which is very painful, or you are out of the game. So this is exactly kind of why GE is basically reinventing during the past three, four, three, three years, reinventing the way they've been doing things. So this is a little bit of the evolution um, of, a, of a story, a little bit of our company. So if you look at the, the 1990s, it was all about operational excellence. Um, it was all about Six Sigma. It's all about control, process, execution. Now, if you go to the, 20, to the 2000s, you see that at some point kind of, we had to rethink and say, we should be out there. It was a, primarily a US company. So we kind of had to expand. And in the 2000s, actually, we went from being present in 100 countries to being present in 170 countries. So how do we do that? It's, it was all about going to the emerging market. It's all about growth. It's all about um, investment and all that. Now, when we go into the, the, 20, uh, the 2010s, then we say, OK, hold on a minute. We've been adding and adding and adding things. We need to simplify at some point, or it becomes too complex for employees to understand. So it is about speed. It is about customer. But it is about doing it in a simpler way. So actually what you've got here, it is exactly what, what I was mentioning that I want you to get, to get uh, these thoughts. So it is, we use fast words, we use GBLeaves, we change the way we manage performance. So that in a way it helps us through this culture of simplification, digital, um, going faster, simpler, and all that. Okay? Um, and why we had to do this? Because this, this, this probably applies to every context externally, not only in GE. So you've got the different parameters kind of when we talk about global, um, when you talk about kind of what focus mean, what risk mean. And there has been an evolution so from the 1990s on prevention, from the 2000s to risk management. And now, guess what? We are in a way where we don't have probably all the answers, but we need to take risk. 
So how do we empower our employees to take risks? Um, and that is actually what some of those uh, frameworks that we are developing um, are introducing this change in the employee's mindset. Um, so this is, this is an interesting way of how we basically had as well to shift our structures internally. Um, you see in the 1990s where basically this uh, vertical, it's command and demand, hierarchical, as uh, we used to know in many companies, then you go to the 2000s and then it is matrix, it's complex again, multiple decisions, decisions where the power is, but it's almost everywhere, functions with business. Um, now if you go to the 2010s, then you see that, it, which is the day, the day today, it is, okay, so we're, we live in a, a horizontal world. So customers today, because of the speed, because of the need, they don't really wait for the top executives in the US to make the decision. They want the decisions being made where the action is. So that's very good in theory, but do, we need to train our employees to be able and empowered to make those decisions, to gain confidence in the system to, get, to make those decisions. So this is, all these have started to prompt internally the thought that we need to change, yes, but unless we provide the right mindset to our employees and we help them going through the process, that is not going to happen. Even if we reduce our span and layers of control, so that's, for example, the number of, um, of uh, direct reports that a manager has, so that the communication flows, um, the structure in layers. So we can do all that, but if the, mindset, if the mindset is not there, it's very difficult. So all this has started to kind of working on the outcomes. Teams that horizontally, from the bottom up to kind of the top in the different layers, takes decisions quickly at the same time where the operation and the execution is happening. So being responsive, being adaptive to kind of what's going on. Uh, so that's, that's the type of things that we, are, we have been training from a change perspective and cultural change to our employees. Um, so then you think, okay, so th this is a little bit more like a why now? Why now? Because the shift, is that there's a lot of vulnerability externally. And there are different magnitude of the change, there are different, different types of change, and also there are different types of predictability of the change. Um, then you go to GE, and GE as well internally suffered a lot of changes from a pure repositioning of the company. So we won before more capital driven than industrial. Now today we are almost 70, 80% industrial with the aim to be at some point 100% industrial. So we expand, we are in 70, uh, 70 countries more than we were like five years, 10 years ago. Um, we are in markets that probably nobody kind of know, nobody knows what are the rules of engagement there. Um, and also kind of how do we shift the focus of being US centric decision making to expand that outside of the US where really uh, resources are, growth are and things like that. So this is kind of as well the need for us to change the culture and also demographics, which is what Carolina basically um, explained. So we, we, we basically have got boomers and, uh, and, uh, and Generation X, um, but then today you see that the workforce is going from a millennial actually if I'm not mistaken, in the US, 15% of the world, so almost, and it is already a millennial. So they actually really need to, we need to kind of change the way we think through that so that we enable those people to succeed as well. Um, so that's, that's why, and that's kind of what we were saying around, there is a continuous discontinuity of, of, of the change of the environment. Um, because there are differences in magnitude, there are differences in nature, but there are differences in predictability. And it's the predictability piece and the, and the piece of navigating under uncertain times where managers, leaders, and employees really, really don't know sometimes what to do. So how do we prepare them for the future that is ahead? And especially in our industry, in my industry where my business is playing, which is the oil and gas industry, you all know how volatile it is these days. So we need to really prepare our, 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 our employees and leaders to basically go through these uncertain times. How do we stay relevant with all this, right? So this is, this is, um, this is kind of how we look at change. And to me, the important thing of change is not just changing for the sake of changing. Uh, because unless you do change, change that last, nothing is going to happen. Sometimes we kind of go through the process 
um, we bump, and, and it's not until we bump into an issue where we said, okay, hold on, we didn't thought about this, this, and this. So, so it is, it is thinking, thinking ahead, what is the change that is going to last? So a very, a metaphor will be like, think about the spinning plates on wooden doubles. So the moment that you start spinning the plates, um, yes, when you start to creating a shared need, then you move into the vision. And then when you are going to go through making progress, then you see the, the plate that you started to spin to go as low down. And it's one kind of you need to basically take care that it is not just a one-off, that is just a, um, a tick on the box and move on, because that is what makes change last and stick. So this is a little bit the approach, and we actually have one, uh, one tool that we use when we speak about large, complex issues um, that especially impact the organization and the culture. And I would speak a little bit about, about CAP, which is our change acceleration process. And it's what, what we use when we need to basically um, put into place, introduce within an organization a big type of change, especially from a cultural point of view. When there is a small issues, um, a small um, Areas were kind of was more technical. We use workout. It's a, it's a methodology, but that doesn't have much impact on organizational culture. Basically, this is when we need to redefine a different process. When we need to kind of go through through um, a set of kind of directions that that are pretty well defined. And then we use Lean Six Sigma when there are like large scopes, but indeed it's not a still a cultural. We use CAP when we talk about a big organization cultural cultural change. This is basically what our employees uh, feel when we announce, and we've been announcing during the past three, four years, an organization change. So this is a little bit the CAP acceleration process. Um, we go through leading the change and changing the systems and structure, and that is the basis of what we do. And then how do we do it? What are the transition states that we go through? Uh, represent um, the different process. So we go from creating the shared need we go from then shaping the vision, mobilizing the commitment, making progress, and kind of um, monitoring and, and make sure that that, ch that change lasts. So every, it is almost like a, a process that takes like two or three days when we want to implement those changes. It takes then a socialization externally, and we go through different, different areas on, on, on this model. So this is a model for kind of, I think there is an internet actually some information about it. And, and it's, it's, it's for you to kind of work through the different areas, going from a current state, the change that we want to make, until the future state. So here we're entering in this, in this uh, area where I wanted you to have these three, three we're going to go, go deep into three, three models framework, which is performance development, um, GE beliefs, and also fast work. Um, for you to understand how we are going through all this, all this change. So basically, we needed to, with all that I've just been saying, at some point, we needed to reset um, to deliver those results in an uncertain world, especially in some of the industries that are very convoluted today. And we've been going through that within the past, during the past three years. This is a very important, very important page for us because we have been doing this transformation through simplification. Um, again, so we, if you look at the, the model that we've got in the company, in, in 1990s, it was operational excellence, as I was saying. So the process, um, uh, product lines, going through controls, through execution, and then going up. Um, we go to the, to the 2000s, and then it was growth, um, it was geographic expansion, um, it was complex matrix. And then there was a turning point in 2012 we, through our uh, GE opinion survey where our employees says, you guys are too, too complex, are too bureaucratic. We cannot make a single decision. Everybody wants to be part of a decision. This just cannot happen. So that actually made us redefine structural changes in the first place. We actually have to shift the hardware. So how do we do that? We created centers of excellence, which simplify some of those decision making and processes across. Um, we went through, obviously, um, 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 systems. So we, we had, I think we had 300 systems, probably 300 different legal entities in one single business unit. And the reason as well is because if you look at, for example, oil and gas, 
It has, been, it has a story of 30, 40 years that has been acquisition over acquisition. So then it has been adding, adding, adding with different systems. So at some point we had to simplify our ERPs and our IT systems as well. And then it goes through lean management, effective um, span and layers of control. We just kind of have a manager that has one direct report and then the other has another one direct report. The moment the communication goes from here to here, has passed days, the communication is different, the message is different. So we have to go through all the lean management as well. So that help is a journey, but the next opinion survey, um, what our employees told us was, look, you've changed now some of the hard, hard still, the structural changes. But guess what? Leaders are still are not thinking in that way. We are not seeing them leading with that example that you are telling us. Um, so we actually had to go <laughs> through a cultural shift uh, over the past three years where we required to shift as well the software. And this is the mindset change so that the hardware piece is enabled so all the simplification efforts that we did, if we didn't, if we, if we didn't study to shift the software, it were not, it, they were not able to make a, a real impact. So how do we do that? Um, we realign the values again of the company. There was a set of values that, um, it, I mean, they were present in the, in the company for many, many years. And guess what? We are in a different world. We are in a, in a world that is it, seen as a continuum. So we had to reset our core values in a different way. We also had to retool a little bit the way we think about serving our customer. Um, and fast work actually put the focus of what we do, not in internally, and, and sometimes GE has been very criticized that it's a very internal focus organization. So we actually had to shift to put the focus of everything that we do into the customer, and fast work is what, what enabled us to do that, and we'll talk about that later. And then we have to rethink the way we, dev we, we assess performance within the business and, and, and the company and, and employees. Because if we are saying that we need to do things differently, then we also need to apply a different way of looking at performance. Still with meritocracy, still differentiation, because that is part of the GDNA. But the way we do it, it is fundamentally different now. And actually, this performance development piece was introduced um, this year. So it has been a journey. It has not been something that we introduced all of a sudden. It has been a journey during the past four or five years. So what, it, what is what it takes to basically enable the way we work of 300 uh, plus, 300,000 plus employees? It requires, it requires really a huge amount of change management and it requires a message from the top, but also interventions at the bottom. Um, so we basically reposition ourselves and, and we put everything that we do, the customer, in the center of everything that we do. From FastWorks, which are business project related, but we are enabled them to, do, to be done in a different way, to beliefs, I don't have to think, I want to think more about how I'm behaving in the business that impact the customer and not just myself, not just the employee, and also performance. What I do is not just for me, it is for my, com it is for my customer. So we basically put everything in perspective and put the customer at everything that we do. And every employee is measured on the impact on one or another um, um, area that we do for the customer. Fax works, um, just giving a little bit of, um, of an introduction. Um, it, is, it, is, um, it is a tool that in a way enables the employee when there is a customer issue, instead of going through a long project, a long proce process, is basically try to create minimum viable products, we call MVP, which serve the customer as quick as possible, and then we all learn and adapt as we go. So we will see a little bit of that framework. When we talk about beliefs, it's actually a different way of behaving. So in the past values, it was seen in a way, because of also the years, it was seen in a way of like now, that's the value that I have now. Beliefs is more of a continuous. Belief is more of, of how can I be a bit better? I will never be perfect. And how can I kind of develop myself to continuous growth, so it's a continuous development process. We went through 
uh, performance development where you had the employee and the manager and then they were saying, so I did that, I displayed that behavior, I supported that, and everything was related to the past. Well, the world outside, it is so changing that it's actually, we, need, we have to bring people thinking forward and not thinking past. So, so that's, the, that's the belief with the performance development. How do I, how do I basically think about learn and adapt to win? How do, I, um, how do I kind of think about how customers determine my success? Um, and how do I kind of um, navigate under uncertainty? So these are the type, the type of things that, that we go. And we also put with performance development the accountability in the employee. So what usually happens is that you had the employee submitting the performance evaluation and thinking that something is going to happen, a training from HR, a uh, promotion. Uh, so they put the, the, the accountability of the performance development in the other side. With the new performance development system, the accountability is on myself. You have freedom every minute, every day of the year to request insights, to request feedback, to ask what you want, and not just the typical mid-year review, end of the year review process. So this, these are the type of things that, that we, we change. So the beliefs, um, how do we bring that to life? It was a, it was a difficult shift because in the end, we, we kind of had to tackle different areas at the same time. From the top, as, as I've been kind of saying, so basically leaders having as well part, as part of their goals and objectives of that year, the way of introducing their beliefs, running workshops, showing their beliefs, making it personal, um, and kind of we've got all the leaders blogging, having uh, breakfast discussions, so that was one. Then you've got the middle, which is the peer-to-peer -peer recognition of the beliefs. I wouldn't expect an employee to change just because the leaders say so. So then we have to actually enable certain activities and interventions at the middle or peer level so that the whole, the whole culture changes too. And then we had GY, which is obviously um, as part of the corporation, you've got the, the different websites, the different storytelling, and kind of the different showcase ac around the different businesses. This is basically um, the beliefs piece on how kind of, it's a, it's a way of measuring the how of the performance, but with a forward looking. So we went through, um, when we talk about customer, right? So we went through, instead of making the sale, to basically be customer driven. You can make the sale once, but if you don't attend the rest of the customer needs, you probably, it will be probably difficult to make the sale twice or third. So basically, it was like, how do you put customer on its, on its overall, on its own, in the center? And then one of the beliefs was like, customer determine of success. So if I want to have success, then what is what I need to do differently with the customer in a, in a continuous period? Um, then um, how do we go from a control world where many of the leaders didn't want to lose their powers to basically learn and, and learn with a speed and with an urgency and, and stay lean to go fast. So how do we basically need to make some decisions to, to go faster? Adapting, so we are not perfect, the world is not perfect, and the world changes every day. So this whole concept of being perfect role model is no longer, is no longer within, within the company. So we, just, we all need to adapt and learn to win, and as things come, then we need to basically do things differently and adapt. So is this, is this mindset change? When we talk about um, people and talent, so is empowered and inspired each other. So we, want to go, we wanted to go from the traditional concept of talent management, somebody, HR, your manager, talent manage, managing you, versus me managing, me developing my colleague. So empowered and inspire each other at PO level, it is also part of the, of the beliefs. And then deliver results in an uncertain world. Look, um, it is a changing world, so, so we need to adapt and, and change the game and deliver results still. So how do we, how do, we do that? Um, so that was with regards to uh, the GE beliefs. So just to, just to recap, it's like how we see that is a, as a continuous, not as a, not as a, not as a, as a basically um, um, a solid rock that it was in the past. And then we go to fast work. 
And the fast work approach is an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur framework to accelerate the way we work. So everything starts again with the customer, right? We have to basically try to put together our company from Thomas Edison, that was the, the founder, to basically approaches of the lean startup from Silicon Valley and how we build all that together, keeping the essence of the, and the core of what, made, what, what basically um, um, made us to, to be here, but basically how do we, how do we get farther? And we use this, this approach of, of fast work where things don't have to be, things don't have to be perfect. So we've got the customer in the end, we start identifying the customer need and we propose a solution. It is a perfect solution, we don't know. But we discovered together with the customer. So we go through developing a, a leap of faith assumptions. So what are basically the, um, and that includes commercial, technical, everything. But we do it in a, fast, in a faster way. So we basically assume kind of what are the, what are the, the, key, the, the KPIs of the customer? What are the things that we need to basically um, make sure that the customer wants and needs um, and, the, and the link with the solution that we have proposed? And then we, we basically build what we call MVPs, which is a minimum viable product that we will execute and we will see if that, is, if that helps. If that doesn't help, we give the customer first a, a quick solution to the issue, but then we also involve them in learning and acting and pivoting through the journey um, versus basically having a contact with the customer now and then working ourselves internally in the solution, in the product, and then say, after one year, this is the end product. So we involve the customer throughout the process and we basically develop these minimum viable products that serve the immediate needs and then we learn with them. And guess what? Through this process, actually customers discover needs that they didn't know because we involve them in the whole, in the process. Um, and we make it better because then the customer and the employee and, and the organization goes through discovering as well and learning and, and acting differently. So we discover things together that we didn't know in the very beginning. So it's a different way of approaching. So we've created actually, um, this is a way, this is kind of how do we embed fast work. So there was, um, there are growth boards in the different business units that uh, every quarter they review all the fast work projects around the organization. Um, it doesn't mean that we do everything as fast work, but we, de we definitely choose what are the projects that we can test fast work and, and learn. So we basically accelerate a validated outcome to the customer and we kind of uh, have a gain a speed in serving the customer. Um, and then we embed it in every day. We, we use fast work not only for customers, but we also use it for minimum changes like a change in the office. Okay, let's do this change and let's learn if that works or not versus do it, going through the whole process and then discover it at the end after a, a lot of time that it didn't work. So, so we have tried to embed this in, uh, in every mindset and holding people accountable through the process. There is this uh, almost as a website and, and then everybody has access to different <laughs> projects around the world, the toolkit, and, and go through that. And then we go through performance development um, and the main key of performance development, the new performance development process in GE is about the uh, shifting in accountability, as I was saying. Um, because at the end of the day, you are the only one interested in growing, and in the past it was seen more of a, a duty, an obligation that the company has. Look, guess what, if you don't ask, if you ask or if you don't ask, you probably don't get or you will get. So we had to train people of going away of this one year review. And uh, how do we do that? So we, we tried to involve, uh, we, we actually made a couple of big changes in, um, in the way we think about it. So one is that we went from goals, which is what we, you, you, we usually, you usually use in a performance development. So you, what are your list of goals? What do you need? blah, blah, blah. So here we, we move from goals to priorities to really focus on things that matter at a bigger scale. I can have the same priorities of my colleague in the same department. Now, how am I going to do it? It is different and it is enab enable, enable actually through, the, through, a, through a tool that we would see. Then the how, uh, which is kind of the beliefs that I've explained. And then we went through as well um, 
changing the, uh, through an outcome process. So what I want the employee to think is what is the impact that I have in the customer and the impact that I have in the business. Know how good I am or not how bad I am, how level I end up at the end of the performance development process. And most of you know, I mean, you've got from, from top talent, uh, uh, development needed, things like that. So it became, in a way, a way of be, pe having people level across the organization on performance. Here is this actually not, not level at all. There's no outcome of the performance. It is more a, a, around what is the impact that you've done for the business. Um, so it is ongoing. You hold the employee accountable for driving it, not the manager, not the company. So you will really uncover the true managers because are the ones that would have the, con the ongoing dialogue and you really uncover the true talent that wants to be developed. Um, and this is actually, we created a tool to support this process as well. So you've got uh, different touch points, which once you've set up your priorities at the beginning of the year, you actually have, instead of waiting till a mid-year review, you actually, employees have accessibility to kind of go through touch points, ongoing discussions, what is what I have to do differently, I want to move over in, in this role, so all these type of promotions, all these type of things in a very, in a very uh, contemporary and ongoing way. And then um, another important change is that we introduce the 360 colleague insight. So there is, there, is a, there is an opportunity through the current performance development process to have to request insights, and, 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 and you would say it's not feedback anymore, it is insights. Well, I want to know, I want to receive feedback and insight from my peers in the past, from a, you, normally in a performance development um, traditional process, you will not have um, information about how your peers see you, how your direct reports see you, unless you do a formal 360 process. Well, we have embedded the 360 in the day-to-day -day development of the individual and the employees. Um, and you can request them every day, every minute, um, and this is as well the way we frame it. So you can request insights and you can receive insights. So what we want to do is that, uh, what we encourage employees is that if you are in a presentation of, like this, so I will be providing a presentation, an employee providing a presentation, and then uh, what, what I want to, to drive is that the colleague will be able to send me an insight and say, you did great. Um, continue talking in that way, continue framing the topics. Now consider for the next time doing this, 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 and that. So we frame it in a way, feedback, is some, it feels that it's something from the past. Giving continues and considers, being a specific, provides the employee a different way of looking at things um, versus what they did wrong or what they didn't do. This is more about what you did well and continue doing, what you need to do differently, you need to do more of. So it's a shift from, the way, from a way of looking at it uh, with a forward-looking, forward-looking uh, pace. And all of this at the end is um, being kind of, being getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. It is very uncomfortable when we go through this, uh, we've got employees going through this process and receiving an insight of a colleague that they, they don't like. So, so what, what do they do with that? So we have to enable a set of kind of discussions around employees on how to manage the uncertainty as well of receiving a feedback or receiving an insight in this way um, that, that they really need to kind of manage and see what they do with them. There are some employees that they receive an insight of consider doing differently and they just don't know what to do, they don't agree, and they don't do anything. But there are other employees that say, okay, so if this person, this person, and this other, they're saying this, why they're saying this? There might be something. So it is an integrated approach of all the different insights uh, from a continued considered perspective that makes the employee think differently versus just the typical traditional manager telling the employee, you didn't do this right, you have to do this differently, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and this is indeed, I mean, at the end, with everything that we have in front of us, we, this is a new Olympic game um, where we don't know what we have ahead of us, but what we know is that we need to prepare our employees to be able to, to, to learn and adapt to win in that environment that is coming ahead of us. So 
cultural shift and introducing all this change, it takes time, um, but, uh, but it, it positions us ahead of the curve of whatever it will come so, so that actually we can you know, get better and being better in, out there and performing better too. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.